if your counselor has ever mentioned your name outside a counseling session to other people or said i had a session with this person and you're there to other people or shared some information with your name attached to it in public your counselor has broken the confidentiality code so it's another episode here on love and light and as usual i always have gist for you guys so you see this therapy and mental health counseling thing we do is not easy especially here in nigeria where all sorts of things happen people have all sorts of you know ideas about certain things so i was speaking with my senior colleague come abinakum then they call him my senior colleague who is also my mentor in mental health counseling and she was sharing how when she started her counseling practice you know she would reach out to women around her who were going through either domestic violence or some issues of some sort but when they would come into her counseling office because she had a space some of them would say things like ah madam this is what i want to tell you it's too plenty you but i never chop since morning i know if you can't they talk when i know go chop i beg buy me so, so she would offer them and say okay let me give you water or let me give you biscuit you say ah no that one don't go rich buy me bread and cook are you as in like bread and cook and true when you buy them the bread and cook they will start spilling as they are eating and whatever they are gisting and all she endured it because this was the beginning of her practice thank god that some people like her paved the way for some of us if you come and eat bread and cook in my counseling session you will share that bread and cook with me because i also need it okay so now can you guess what i want to talk about today can you guess if you can guess drop it in the comment section if i see your if i see your comment first then it means you were correct okay but if you finish watching it then you now drop your comment section of course i know that you heard me say it yeah so today i'm going to be talking about your first therapy session okay your first counseling session how to prepare for your first counseling session ever and what to expect a lot of people i have spoken to who have had their ev first ever counseling session have said to me i don't know what to expect what do you people do there what am i supposed to say some are panicking some are scared some are like can i how can i just open my mouth and start talking to somebody else you know like i don't know you so why should i start telling you all my life story and all of that yeah so I realized that this was a very, very big gap. And so I'm here to answer that question. So if this is your first time going for, if, the, if you're having your first counseling session, this video is going to be of great help. Make sure that you get this video into the hands of everyone who has never had a session and possibly has had a session but had a disastrous one. And if you have a unique story of someone who went for a counseling section, session rather and then they had a fight so there's one gist i have for you like that don't worry we'll get to that point i'll give you don't be in a hurry yeah so today i am going to start by talking about how to prepare for your first counseling session or your first therapy session mental health counseling deals with psychological um, approaches and terms and all of that what we use when as counselors when we're talking with you are psychological um proven theories and practices okay the same way the doctor has practices that he goes through or follows to be able to treat you we also treat our clients through psychological terms practices you know approaches interventions we use all of those things to help the client feel better and deal with whatever they're dealing with but often when people come for their first counseling session because it's the first time they are having a conversation with this or maybe they've seen it in a movie you know how they do the counseling sessions in a movie it looks very interesting you're usually eager to sit down and hear how are they really getting to this you know if you've ever seen this movie um oh my god what's that movie called now i can't remember the movie right now but i will drop it in the comment section or in the course of the video where he acted as lucifer yes i remember now lucifer is a series called lucifer if you haven't seen it i haven't finished it though but I, the parts i watched were very interesting where he would sit down with his counselor and he would say things like his name is lucifer he has another personality he also has this in my head i'm like 
this counselor is staying still listening to Satan talk. Like, how do you even get to that point? But let's come back to reality, yeah? That's a movie. This is reality. So what do you expect when you go in for your first translating session? The first thing I want you to know is how to prepare for it is to get information. That's number one thing. Well, there are nine things you need to do. But the first one is get information. Get information about your counselor. Get information about your counseling practice, about the counseling practice. Get information. Go and read up on the internet. That's why you have Google. These days, you don't need to um, type long. If you don't know how to speak English, don't worry yourself. All you need is to use that, you know, microphone icon on the Google app. If you've not updated your Google, please go and update it, okay? On the Google search app, all you need to do is press the microphone. It will write, speak now. And ask it whatever question you want to ask it. It will bring out the information for you, okay? So you don't need to um, write if there's a concern. Go on the internet. Read up. What should I expect, you know? Who, what do I know? If you, if you want to find out more about your counselor, go and read up about your counselor. You can even ask her or ask him to share with you their profile or to share with you anything. If you want to go on their social media just to see what they've posted or shared, please feel free to do that. But my guess is that you most likely you know, got in contact with them either through referral or you're following them on social media where they are sharing a lot of tips and helpful thoughts on mental health space. Okay, so get information. That's the first thing you want to do. Don't just go into a session expecting nothing. You know, go there knowing that you have information about the counselor and about mental health counseling. Number two, write down the issues you would like to share with your counselor as well as questions. When you're going in for your first ever counseling session or therapy session, it could be very, um, I don't want to use the word daunting, but it could be very, very, um, it, it be a strange feeling. Yeah, it could be a weird feeling for you because you don't know what to do. You don't know what to share. Some people may start to talk and talk open now. Often when I have people coming in for their first therapy session, I kid you not, I spend only 10 minutes talking and the remaining 50 minutes my client is sharing because sometimes they start a story you know how you've been keeping things in your heart for a long time you keep it up keep it up keep it up you know for all of you who are saying i don't need therapy and i person we don't chop the good therapy this is for you and uh, you are the kind of people we see in our sessions you come and you're gisting 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 then you say and that's my uncle then you now give me the story you branch out oh, and give me the story of that your uncle then after i were like let's never talk about that my uncle hey back to you not take me back like 50% back to what you said, and then you're talking and talking and talking. This is helpful because it shows that you have a lot to share. But that kind of takes us off, and we end up wanting to spend more than an hour. Every standard session in mental health counseling is actually 50 minutes. Here in Nigeria, we chose, some of us chose to, some of us, I remember some of us, I mean counselors, chose to do 50 to 60 minutes. But in the world, as a standard, 50 minutes is the standard time for a session. 50 minutes is never enough whenever we're doing counseling sessions for Nigerians because they are not used to the idea of counseling. And I'll tell you why as we go on, okay? So the second thing, again, is to write down the issues you like to talk about. What are those things bothering you? Write it down. Put it down in paper. Don't put it in your head. You would forget, you know? Also, if there are questions you want to ask the counselor, for example, um, this discussion we are having, can somebody else enter? Because I've had, had people ask me, can, can my auntie join me or can my uncle join me or can my brother join me in the session? Sessions are private sessions, okay? So these are some of the questions you want to ask your counselor. Um, questions like, do I need to, you know, say everything in my heart? Questions like, if I say something that is not good, if I say I've killed somebody now, what are you going to do with that information? Or if I say I want to kill myself, what will you do with that information? Your counselor has all that answer, okay? So make sure you ask the questions, write them down. Write your thoughts down, put them down in writing, also put down your questions. That's the second thing to do when you're preparing for your first session. The third thing is, if it's a physical session, right? If it's a physical session, now, for counseling, it can either be virtual, by virtual I mean online, through the internet, some platforms and all, or it's physical. Physical means you walk into the office of a counselor and you sit and you can see the counselor and the counselor can see you physically. You guys can touch and feel each other like you know that the person is right there in front of you, okay? But there are also virtual sessions. Now, when you're going for your 
um, sessions, whether it is physical or it is virtual, make sure you dress appropriately. Now, what I mean dress appropriately, we don't have uniform. Don't be afraid. There's no ashwabi. What I mean by that is dress decently and comfortably. You don't want to walk into your counseling session if it's a physical one and you are uncomfortable with your crop top as a lady or your mini skirts or maybe you're just wearing something that you're not because you feel like because I am going out, I should dress like I'm going to the beach. You are going for a counseling session, okay? You want to dress appropriately. Dress comfortably. Please don't go and wear Iro and Buba where you'll be sweating, all right? You won't sweat because your counselor's office should have an air conditioner. It should be conducive enough. Even if it's not, there's no AC. Breeze go, they blow you, yeah? So go there dressed comfortably. Don't dress anyhow. Dress in a way that is decent so that when you sit, you can sit properly for ladies, for guys. You know, don't go there wearing singlet and bearing on your chest. We know you've got the muscles, but this is a therapy session. So dress decently, okay? So that's the third thing you need to do. Dress properly. Even for virtual sessions, yes. I just had someone's question in my head. Yes, for virtual sessions too. Because your camera will be on. Your video camera for whatever gadget you're using to have that virtual session will be on. Up from the waist all the way up, the counselor will need to have a good look at you, okay? So you definitely need to dress properly and comfortably. Don't wear your pajamas where, because, ah, my session is in my house. It's private, so let me just wear my nightwear. And then all your private parts, like your boobs are showing. I can see your nipples in the video, or I can see your shirt, you know? Sorry for the word, but I just had to say it and put it out there. You know, I want to be candid with you, all right? So don't dress in your nightwear. Don't dress in anything that is revealing. Just make sure you dress decently, you know, properly. You don't have to make up if you don't want to, all right? But dress decently. The fourth thing you want to do in preparing for your first session is to get your gadgets on silent, don't go for a therapy session or a counseling session and you're saying, dru, 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 dru. excuse me, ma. And says, I go call you back. I go call you back. I did, I did inside session. I, did. I said, I go call you back. <laughs> sorry, sorry, man. No, you don't want to do that. That is inappropriate. And it also um, cuts the communication between you and the counselor because there's a flow. Every therapy session has a flow. And when those that flow starts, you don't want to interrupt the flow. So make sure that every gadget that you have, if it's a physical session, is on silent mode. There's something called silent mode on your phone. Look for it. Put your phone on silent mode, okay? Or put it on vibration. Preferably silent mode so that you're not distracted by the vibrations that come from it. And if you're having a virtual session as well, make sure that if the gadget you're using you know, to have that conversation is, is, not, um, is not the one that you're going to use and receive calls. Make sure you put it on silent mode as well or put it away, okay? If you need to inform other people that say hey, between 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock, I go day therapy session, I beg no call me or no send me message. Please do that. But don't interrupt the sessions by picking up calls or replying messages. It is rude. Okay. Also, do not carry your counselor if you're in virtual session. Please, I'm begging you. Don't carry your phone or your gadget or your system and put it in the kitchen where you are frying plantain and egg and say you are in a session. You are not in a session. You are trying to create content. You need to respect the counseling space. It is a very intimate and very professional work, okay? You don't take your system or take your gadget you're using on the session. Now, we can see you taking us around your house. We can see your ceiling. Then we are seeing your floor. Then we see that you're doing kru, 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 kru in the kitchen and all of that. You're answering me, no, 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 no. It is inappropriate. Find a clean, nice space. Sit down somewhere that has a lot of sunlight, natural light, or you have your ring light, whatever. Set it up in such a way that we can see you clearly and you're right in front of the camera. Do not move around. If you need to take a quick break to adjust something, by all means, share with us, okay? But do not, again, do not, you know, carry your gadget and be moving up and down and make sure your gadget is on silent mode. Now, the fifth one, um, and then we'll go on a break and I'll tell you some more when we come back, is don't panic. It is very easy for a few people, some people to panic when they're going for their first session. Oh, what do I say? Hey, what is it? What is it? And sometimes, right, 
the person who you're going for that session with may be a family member or a close friend. In our practice, we are encouraged to have sessions with everybody, okay? But the reason why we are restricted sometimes to not having sessions with our family members or friends is because of the familiarity, okay? They may feel like they are too much like if I tell her, she will tell my cousin that lives in that, you understand what I'm saying? So they may not come with their full chest. They may not want to share. However, there are some friends who believe in the confidence or the fact that you will keep their secrets and keep everything. And that's part of the code that guides us as mental health counselors. We have a code that is called a confidentiality code. Anything we share in that space cannot be used against the person or said to them outside that space. Your counselor, and I'll say it so that you know, if your counselor has ever mentioned your name outside a counseling session to other people, or said, I had a session with this person and you're there to other people or shared some information with your name attached to it in public, your counselor has broken the confidentiality code, okay? I'm not going to tell you that you can sue the person because I don't know if you can, but the confidentiality code has been broken and that means that counselor should not even be seen in the first place. It means that they are not professionals or he or she is not a professional. So don't panic, okay? There are rules that guide us and guide everything. If you are given a form, fill the form, read it through. Please don't just be a typical Nigerian who buys a gadget and doesn't read the manual. Please read the form and then get all the information you need from there, okay? So let's take this quick break and when we come back, I will give you more gist. <music> All right, guys, so we are still talking about how you need to prepare for your first session. We have mentioned five. Now we're going to give the remaining four. I told you there were nine, and then we'll move on to the next thing, okay? Now, number six is eat, drink, water. I did not say drink alcohol. Because when I say drink, I just have to pause. I realize if I say drink, some people go and drink akpetesh or go and drink vodka before they come for session. No. Eat, drink water, use the toilet before your session, whether it is physical or virtual. Please, I beg you, okay? Make sure you have eaten. Don't come to your session hungry. First of all, you will not be able to comprehend anything that the counselor will say to you. You will not even be able to share. You will be speaking out of hunger. And when you speak out of hunger, the things you will say will make no sense, absolutely no sense, okay? And you will start getting angry when you are talking, even without the counselor saying anything. So please make sure you have a good meal. Make sure you eat, make sure you drink water and you're filled up. Use the toilet. If you need to do number two or number one, right before your session, make sure you go just to check that your bowel is free, you know, or you're done, you know, you, you just need to pee. Just go straight up and pee and then, you know, come to the session. Why? So that you can sit through that 15 minutes without needing to go to the toilet. If perhaps you need to go to the toilet while you're in the session, it's okay to take a quick break, okay, to do that. But ideally, you should do all of this before the session. Don't come to the I've seen people sitting in the session and they're like, eh, hey, so ma, please don't be angry. I'm hungry. And you just be hearing biscuits wrapper. I'm just freaking them out. And then they are eating. Why are you eating during a session? You shouldn't be eating during your session, okay? Don't eat, don't drink. You can drink water. Water can be right beside you. Either if it's a physical session, your counselor most likely has prepared water for you in a jug or in some, you know, maybe table water as they call it. And then have a glass there that you can take. Because when you talk, you lose, um, you lose energy. Okay, you need to replenish, your mouth gets dry, you need to get wet, your throat gets dry, you need to get it wet. So it's important that water is at your session. But if it's a virtual session, it means you and your counselor are not in the same space. Your client, the client and the counselor are not in the same space. So feel free to have a bottle of water beside you, okay? Not a bottle of soda. If you decide to have soda while you're in session, fine. I wouldn't know because it will be in a clear container or it will be in something. But make sure you have water beside you to drink from time to time. Please, no chewing of gum during the session as well. Don't come chewing gum. It is very rude and very inappropriate to chew gum during your session, okay? You can have sweets in your mouth, which is good. It would, you know, but please no lollipops, stick lollipop, and you're doing mwah, mwah, when you are, no, please, it's inappropriate, okay? So that's the sixth way to prepare. Eat, drink water, use the toilet before you come. Number seven, have water with you. Oh, I mean, I just said that, okay? So have water with you. Have water beside you. Have water with you so that you can drink from time to time. Number eight, come with a notepad and a pen. 
I know that a lot of us are tech savvy, so we want to type on our iPads or some tab, you know, or on our phone and you know all of that. And please, you are not allowed, I need to say this here, you are not allowed to secretly or publicly record your sessions. Sessions are private. As a matter of fact, if you record your sessions, the, the, the mental health counselor doesn't have anything to lose, however, because they are being professional. The person who may have issues will be you because if that audio or video or whatever is thrown out, it, it may implicate you on some certain levels, okay? So, but it is not allowed for you to record your sessions privately or publicly. Do not record your sessions, okay? When you come in, come with a proper notepad, dedicated notepad to those sessions. See, you can't bring your child's 30 leaves to a session. I don't know what you want to achieve with that, but please do not come to a session with just a piece of paper. Or you say, eh, hey, um, uh, doc, I beg, give me a sheet of paper. Let me tear them. It doesn't do and then you put it together and you start writing no you need a proper notepad why because certain things will be taught certain things will be shared you need to take down notes things that taught you things that mean something to you you're going to be giving assignments okay so you want to have a notepad dedicated to your mental health sessions okay write them down with a pen that is working it's okay your counselor can always share a pen with you for those that are having virtual sessions you also need to have a notepad and a pen okay this doesn't exempt you. You also need to have a notepad dedicated to your therapy session. So you can always go back on the things that your therapy, your therapist has suggested that will make you a better person. Notes on things you should do. Assignments that you have done. You know, all of those things, you need to note them down. If I see you coming for a therapy session without a notepad, I will forgive you the first time. The next time, you we will not start that session until you get a notepad, okay? So please make sure you go and get a notepad dedicated to that particular purpose all right and a pen that works not pencil um number nine come with an open mind and honesty and this is the last one on this list okay come with an open mind and be honest don't come planning to deceive the counselor let me shock you your counselor will know when you are lying yes you know why we are trained psychologically to understand people when a person lies no matter how good a liar you are there are certain body gestures body language that you give off that helps us know that you're lying why because we have studied it okay we have studied it maybe not everybody but some counselors have studied a lot and so they know and they will know it doesn't even help you coming to a session and lying it doesn't help you coming to a session and not being truthful or being open-minded. You know, sometimes, so I said I was going to give you a gist, right? So let me give you that gist at this point. So a colleague was sharing with me how he had a physical session with a client. And the client walked into, you know, of course, sat down. And somewhere 30, 40 minutes into the conversation, the client gets angry. The client gets angry. And then stands up and says, you don't know what you're saying. I put it to you. You don't know what you're saying and wanted to go off physical on the counselor right now at this point what could he do because i mean you cannot beat your client you cannot you know which is why you should have security around okay you can't do this to your, so there are a lot of things you can do now back to the gist so he decided to calmly tell the man told him breathe in breathe out you need to say i cannot calm down calm down for what calm down for what eventually he got the client to calm down and now the client was in a good space i was ready to talk he ended the session and told the client to go home i asked him so i was like why did you end the session he was like at that point he was already agitated and he was upset and he was also angry because he's also a human being, he's not a robot, he would feel agitated. So he had to end the session, okay, and let the client go home, get better, and then fix another session so that he does not react to the client's actions. And these are some of the things, this is just one of the things that we face when we have sessions. We have explosive outbursts of emotion and all of that during sessions because, yes, therapy sessions will open up wounds. Okay, which is why we say come with an open mind, come to be honest, because you will cry. 
things will happen to you. You will feel have feelings that you've never felt before or you haven't felt in a long time. This is part of the healing process or part of the dealing process or the discovery process that you need to go through. So those are the nine things you need to do when preparing for your ses your first session. Now, there are things to expect, and that's the next thing I'm going to share with you, okay? I'm going to just take a quick break out. This is a long video, but it's important that you keep this handy, okay? When I come back, I will tell you what to expect, and then we will round up. All right, guys, so welcome back from that short break. If you are listening to us for the very first time, if this is your first time coming across our videos anywhere, whether it's on YouTube, Instagram, wherever it is you've seen us, any social media platform, make sure that you like this video, make sure you subscribe to our channel because it is important for you to share this information, see all the things you're learning. It will not be nice if you keep it to yourself, okay? so feel free to subscribe, follow us, turn on the notification bell, you know, so that you can get notice when we drop our videos every week. All right. So I have finished sharing nine things that you need to prepare for your first session. Now I want to tell you also in the same video, how or what to expect. Okay. What to expect in a session because you are preparing for a session. You don't know what to expect. So it's while you're preparing, you also need to know, what to expect that just makes sense all right now i will start with there are seven things you need to expect at a, at your first session or at a counseling session i'm going to share them with you the first one is the counselor is your friend and not your enemy when you're coming for your session please note your counselor is not your enemy don't come ready to fight don't come with i put it to you that you are wrong you cannot tell me that i have anger issues no don't come with that kind of, you know, mentality, if, we, as we, I, if I call it that, or that kind of mindset. Come knowing that your counselor is your friend. The only difference is your counselor is equipped professionally or as a professional to guide you through whatever issues you're going through. So feel free to come in ready to share with an open heart, okay? Your counselor is your friend and not your enemy. Number two on what to expect from... The session or your first session or any session at all the counselor will listen more than he or she would speak so don't be alarmed if for the next 40 minutes of your first session or any session your counselor is just going mm, mm, okay all right that is part of what we as counselors are trained to do we are trained to listen intentionally okay the kind of listening we do is not just to hear you we don't hear you we listen to you because while you're sharing and you're speaking you're giving off other information that you are not saying now in communication they say that non-verbal communication is actually up to 70 75 percent if not 80 percent of what the person is trying to say is conveyed through non-verbal means meaning your um, the texture of your voice, the tone of your voice, your body language, your body gestures, all of those things speak more than the words you're saying. So if you've spoken for one hour, in that one hour, you've probably had times three of what you're trying to pass across in nonverbal communication. So we listen. So if you're in a session, your counselor may not be speaking. She may just be saying, mm, I may post you somewhere and ask you a question. That is normal in a session. Don't be alarmed. Don't be. Those are the things you should expect. He or she in the first two, first, second, and third session most likely will be listening. Depends on what you're dealing with, okay? And then for subsequent sessions, it could now be more of the counselor or equal, you know, conversation with both the client and the counselor. So that's the second thing you should expect. The counselor will listen more than speak. The third thing to expect in your counseling session or in your session is the counselor will ask questions. So answer truthfully and clearly as you can. We are going to ask you questions when you come for a session. We will tell you, we would ask you things like, so did you say, and we will ask you specifically, like in what year? Don't feel like, why are you asking me what year I broke my leg? How is that important? No, every question the counselor is asking you is very important to getting you help, all right? So answer clearly and as truthfully, don't lie. If they say, oh, how many times did you steal from your mother's pots? Don't say two when it's five. 
because depending on the number it could be tied to a lot of things that could help you so if you withhold information then you are withholding help from you okay we can't help you completely if you're not truthful so make sure that that's the thing you expect the counselor will ask you questions so answer truthfully and as clearly as you can if you can remember clearly states that you cannot remember however if you do remember you can share with your counselor number four on what to expect from the session the counselor will give you assignments or suggest activities or materials okay this uh, this is what to expect your counselor will give you assignments the assignment given to you is so that you can also work on yourself while you're outside the sessions remember your sessions are just 50 to 60 minutes which is approximately an hour okay we can't deal with everything in one session which is why sometimes standard you have sessions ranging between um six to ten sessions sometimes three all the way to 15 sessions sometimes a person can even have up to 20 sessions depends on what they are dealing with sometimes sessions could be a year long yes sometimes you can have a session twice every week for the whole year it is very very possible there's a possibility that happens okay depends on what it is um, the person is dealing with and their availability for sessions that also you know contributes to that so your counselor will give you assignments make sure you do those assignments they will suggest activities to you don't take it for granted okay do those assignments do them write them send it back to your counselor if they say today brush your teeth from the left please go ahead and brush your teeth from the left the counselor knows why they are asking you to and a professional would explain to you why they are asking you to do those things if there are things you're uncomfortable with there will always be a way to work around it because the counselor is not here to give you advice the counselor is here to give you professional help guiding you holding your hand because we believe that every client has the answer to whatever they are going through they just need help figuring it out okay so we are not here to give you advice we're here to help you so whatever your counselor is asking you to do if you're not comfortable with it please share with them don't hide and say ah let me not question her before they will get angry no the counselor is there to help you that is the service they are providing so that's what to expect number five it will be 50 to 60 minutes long all right i will be truthful with you i have had sessions that lasted up to two hours and i was completely fagged out okay now why we keep sessions 50 to 60 minutes is because that's the global standard 50 minutes is the global standard for a professional therapist or mental health counselor because the person listening to you who is a counselor is also a human being after listening to everything you need to share as much as you're feeling all that emotion we are also gathering information and feeling the same thing with you it's something we call empathy right we are putting ourselves in your shoes as we listen to you so the same way you get tired we also get tired because we're taking in information on top of the information we already have so it's going to be 50 to 60 minutes it will not exceed that so as much as possible when you go for sessions have this at the back of your mind I am not going to be in this session longer than 50 to 60 minutes. If you're exceeding that time and your counselor feels like it's necessary for you to stop, he or she would alert you and let you know that you're about to round up the session. Okay, so you can have another session. However, if the counselor feels like an extra 30 minutes is necessary because of what you're sharing, they will also inform you to let you know that it is necessary. But a standard session is 50 to 60 minutes so that's what you should expect number six you may get triggered as you share so feel free to express yourself in words or by crying the counselor will not be angry you see so this number six is basically saying when we start talking it's like opening up a wound that is not healing or that has not healed right when we open up that wound because we need to clean the wound i want you to visualize that with me so imagine a wound that was not cleaned or cared for properly that was just covered and is swelling and smelling and having all sorts of things when you open the wound you're going to need to clean it properly by the time you're touching and cleaning the area you're feeling pain right you feel pain you feel this you feel that and you express what you feel right eventually the wound is cleaned properly it is now stitched if it's one that needs stitching if it's the one that needs to be aired whatever it is and then it heals this is what happens to you in therapy sessions wounds are open things that happened in your past that you have so you have unconsciously buried 
are brought to light. And when those things come up, the way you felt when they happened will come up again. Whatever emotion, if it was anger, if it was your, your teary, if it's that you were sad, you would cry, you would get angry, but it is absolutely okay to express yourself. What is not okay is to break something in the counselor's office because you are angry or to express yourself in ways that are not necessary, you know, that could cause harm to the counselor or to the environment or even to yourself, okay? So the last one, okay, is number seven. And this one is the counselor is a professional and they know what they are doing trust your counselor you chose them because you believed in what they they've done and what they can do to help you so remember that let it be at the back of your mind your counselor is a professional and so they will professionally help you the best way that they can and this is the seven things these are the seven things you should expect in your first session or any session at all that you're having with your mental health counselor have you learned something if you've learned something please make sure to put it in the comment section okay i want to see what you're learning from the channel how you're um, implementing them and if there are other things i didn't mention that you should expect if you're a professional please put it down in the comment section if you're a client are there things you did to prepare yourself for your first session please make sure to share with us and we'll be glad to read your comments and respond thank you very much see you in another episode bye